Welcome back. Now let's prepare phenols. Phenols can be prepared in many ways from different groups of compounds. Um, one way of preparing phenols is to get them from benzene sulfonate, benzene sulfonic acid. That's the name of this compound. If this compound were to be fused with potassium hydroxide, KOH, if you carry off fusion of this compound with potassium hydroxide, then you get phenol. This is one way. Phenol is your first product plus KHSO3. Some persons carry out the same reaction using sodium benzene sulfonate. That means in place of H here, we have Na. In that case, you would fuse it with sodium hydroxide to get um, sodium phenoxide. And then that sodium phenoxide is, um, you know, worked on with acid. It is hydrolyzed by acid to give us phenol. It's a similar reaction to this. It just We call both of them fusion reactions. But if you were to get phenol away from this method, away from fusion, let's say from um, amines, from amines, look at this amine. <clears throat> this compound is called aniline. Aniline is also called amino benzene. Now it is known that when amines react with um, HNO2, that is dioxonitrate 3 acid, the NH2 group of the amine usually becomes an OH group. That's what typically happens. So in this case, we have our aniline reacting with HNO2, and um, this reaction is occurring in the cold. Typically, if you carry out the reaction in the cold, for an aromatic amine like this aniline, you are going to get a diazonium ion, which you can then work upon to get your phenol. So in this case, I'm going to write my product as this phenol with N, triple bond N, CL, all right? And then this is referred to as, sorry, that's the double bond there. This is referred to as a diazonium. So we get a diazo compound as um, an intermediate. Then that diazonium compound, like I said, we can boil it in acid. So we boil with H2SO4. In that case, you are going to get your final product as phenol. So yes, phenol can be obtained from amines. But beware, sometimes both stages are combined in one, such that you have HNO2 here, and instead of cold, what you see there is heat. So it means that they um, assume in that case that with HNO2 ordinarily you have your diazonium. So the heat there is telling you that that diazonium now would already have changed to alcohol. So in that case, you don't write diazonium as product. Instead, you write the alcohol. Then on number three, we could carry out oxidation of cumin. Oxidation of cumin. What is cumin? Cumin is drawn as... The phenol ring with C H three C C H three and H. If you look at this very carefully, you realize that the compound there is two phenol propane. This two phenol propane, when reacted with oxygen, will give us an acid drawn this way. This is an acid. Then we have um, C. H3C and then CH3 and then OOH. This compound can be hydrolyzed. It can be hydrolyzed using acid to give us phenol. So phenol is our final product here and that is another way of making phenol. Then beyond that one, beyond that one, we can also make phenol from Grignard reagents. Grignard reagents by the same oxidation. Grignard reagents, as you are aware, are alkyl magnesium halides. So look at this now, MGBR. This is phenyl magnesium bromide. It's a Grignard reagent. When this is acted upon by oxygen, atmospheric oxygen, that's an oxidation process, you are going to get here OMGBR. 
Now this compound, when reflux with acid, H2SO4, so we're carrying out hydrolysis again, just as we have in this second step, we would get our product as phenol. So phenol can be prepared from Grignard reagents, how? By oxidation first, and then by hydrolyzing the final product using dilute mineral acid. There are some more reactions by which we can get phenols. Um, let's see one or two more as the time permits. I'm trying to keep this as brief as possible so that we can have this, see this reaction now. This is not phenol itself now, but um, okay, sorry, we have this. This compound has the chloro and nitro group located in what arrangement? Do you remember? Para. Good. So if this compound were fused with sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide fusion, and then of course with heat. So what we have here is sodium hydroxide, say 10% sodium hydroxide, not very highly concentrated. That 10% sodium hydroxide in the presence of heat can convert this compound into a phenol derivative. Now notice something, only the Cl is removed and replaced by OH so that O2N remains. And this reminds us of one of the reactions we saw for the preparation of alcohols, which was hydrolysis. In that reaction, we said an alkyl halide could be hydrolyzed to give a phenol. And then we even gave options. We said we could use NaOH, we could use KOH or AGOH. Just in case you've not watched the alcohol videos, do well to watch them because somehow they lay the foundation for these ones. Then, beyond that, we could have several other reactions, like um, this one. We mentioned it before, we said we could have um, SO3, Na. In this case, if you fuse with NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide, you are going to get the ring. And then that ring will have ONA, and that means on the other side we have NaHSO3. So what you are seeing there is sodium phenoxide. That sodium phenoxide, when it is acted upon by acid, H+, we are going to get phenol as our product. So phenol can be prepared from what now? From sodium benzene sulfonate. That is by fusion with sodium hydroxide. Then it's very important that I mention also that phenol can be obtained from coal tar. Yeah, coal tar. You know, coal tar is one of the um, fractions we get from destructive distillation of coal. So yes, there's phenol in coal tar. And then phenol can also be obtained from petroleum. Those are like natural sources of phenol unlike the ones we have mentioned that are synthetic sources of phenol. So leaving those, leaving those, we'll talk about reactions of phenols. Now the reactions of phenol are a bit bulky, we have plenty of them, so I may take some time to talk about one or two in this video before the next video where we'd really talk about reactions of phenols. Now, in the first video, we already mentioned some reactions. For example, we talked about the fact that phenols can be reduced. We talked about the fact that um, phenol can react with certain other substances like um, acid chlorides, acid anhydrides to produce esters. So we may not spend time on those reactions again, such that we save every other reaction until the third video. But for now, let's see one or two reactions of phenol. For the reduction of phenol reduction, I remember telling us that phenol could be reduced in different ways. Now, saying different ways, what are those different ways? I'll show you two here. In both cases now, we have phenol. In the first case, phenol is to be reduced by zinc, and in the second case, phenol is to be reduced by hydrogen in the presence of a nickel catalyst. What will be the difference? 
In this first case, you are going to get something like this. Benzene and zinc oxide. So the reduction here is just the removal of oxygen from phenol and nothing else. But in this second case, you are going to get a reduction of the ring. So this one is a ring reaction. So what I have here is um, OH, so that my product is called cyclohexanol. Cyclohexanol. So cyclohexanol is the product we obtain when phenol reacts with hydrogen in the presence of a nickel catalyst. But in a case where in a case where phenol reacts with zinc, if you carry out reduction by zinc then you are going to get um, zinc oxide as your other product while your main product is benzene. Now having said so, let's see some more reactions of benzene of, sorry, of phenols. This is phenol again. This time phenol is undergoing what we call sulfonation. Sulfonation, we saw that under our canes, I guess. We said it is a reaction that involves H2SO4 and we contrasted it with nitration where we use H2SO4 along with HNO3. So for sulfonation of benzene, um, phenol, beg your pardon, phenol reacts with H2SO4 and um, unlike what we saw in the case of, uh, what do you call it now, alkanes, the products here are a bit different. A bit different in that I am going to get something that looks like this, OH, the ring, SO3, sorry, so if we know normally we know it to be auto para directing and because it's auto para directing we would expect that the substitution that is going to take place would be where? SO3H and then down here SO3H. According to our benzene video, we had said in the video then that OH groups, just like other groups that have saturated valencies, are auto para directing. That's why putting my SO3H there just now. I realized that was the meta position, so we can't have a product there. Instead, our product would be auto para, like this. So, this is what happens when benzene undergoes sulfonation. We get a tri substituted product, that is a product that is substituted at three points. Typically, typically, maybe I should mention that when phenol reacts, you know, based on first principles, Assuming you have your OH group here, this is auto, meta, para, meta, auto. There's no way a reaction of phenol will occur and something will be introduced in this meta position because the OH group is auto and para directing. So in some instances, there is the introduction of a group in the auto position, and that's your product. In some other instances, there's an introduction of something on the para position. Yet some more instances, there's introduction of a group into the auto and para positions, just like this one. Then we even have cases where all auto and para positions will be occupied in our products. Finally, there are cases where you have a mixture of products, one of them being auto-substituted and the other one being para-substituted. So for different reactions of phenols, you can get an array of products. At some point, you may just have to know what is formed for a particular reaction, unlike when you try to work out things, try to imagine what the product should be. So for sulfonation of phenol, bear in mind that what you get as product is a product or a substance where SO3H has been introduced not into one position but into two positions which are the auto and the para positions.